As someone with a history of open heart surgery and who played upright bass for years, if there's any one area of the body that I've struggled to improve mobility in, it's the rib cage. And it turns out there's good reason for this. Movement within the rib cage is actually super complex, but I've taken this complex movement of the rib cage and what I've learned over more than a decade and distilled it down into three simple concepts that you must learn and understand and master in order to truly improve your rib cage mobility. Now there's a lot more to it than I can cover in this video alone, but if you can apply the concepts that we talk about in this video, you'll be able to get about 80% of the way there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So I'm gonna go in order here, and I recommend that you explore these in this order, but just understand that these all map onto each other. So the first factor is gonna be our positioning or our posture. So if we're more upright, kind of in this more extended position, it's gonna bring stuff on the back a little closer together and compress it. It's gonna bring stuff on the front a little bit more up and out and relatively expand it. Now on the flip side, if we kind of slump down like this, just the opposite is gonna happen. It's gonna open up stuff on the back a little bit more and it's gonna compress or bring down stuff on the front. So we need to be able to access both of these positions as well as a neutral point in between. So when we're going about trying to find that neutral point, it all depends on where we start from. If you're starting a little bit more flexed, then you're gonna to have to come up, usually bring the upper part of the rib cage back over that lower part of the rib cage in order to get to that neutral point. And if you're more extended, you usually have to bring this lower part of the rib cage back relative to that upper part. Now, if you're standing, you still wanna have equal weight front and back part of your foot. And if you're in a seated position, you still wanna have equal weight on either sit bone of your pelvis. Now from here, the second factor that we're gonna look at is breathing. So in general, when we breathe, we're gonna have expansion, coupling with inhalation, coupling with external rotation and elevation of the ribs. Then as we exhale, you're gonna to tend to move towards more flexion, internal rotation of the ribs, and overall a rib cage that gets a little bit smaller, all right? So inhale, expand, externally rotate, exhale, compress, internally rotate. And the final factor here is gonna be movement. And we're gonna look specifically at how movement of the arms impacts movement within the rib cage. So when we reach up with the arms, we're gonna overall be coming into this more tall type position. So we're gonna get extension of the spine, external rotation and elevation of those ribs. And then as we reach down, just the opposite's gonna happen. We're gonna get internal rotation of the rib cage and overall move towards this more flexed type position. Now really when we get the best bang for our buck, so when we map all these onto each other, so we're gonna go through a very simple exercise that we can use here to be able to bring all of this together and restore some of that variability and mobility within the rib cage. Now it's worth noting here though, before we actually jump into the exercise, if you wanna get that extra 20% of results, you wanna take it all the way, or if you have a particularly complex or challenging presentation, you're gonna to need to take this to the next level and explore movement within the rib cage in all directions to really be able to get your full results. Now, if you wanna dive into that, I've got a couple other videos that are coming up that are gonna dive into that same thing. But if you want a done for you, simple step-by-step -step program that you can follow that is gonna account for all these things, then go to the link in the description and check out my Movement Foundations programs. All right, so we're gonna tackle all of these factors together. First, like we said before, we're gonna start with the position. So you're gonna kind of assess, are you more extended? Are you more flexed? And for the purpose of this exercise, we're gonna to try to find this happy medium neutral point in between. Now it should be noted here that being neutral is not some sort of special thing. And we do want access to the extremes of extension and flexion, which is gonna cause us to naturally rest in the middle. But for the purposes of this exercise, where we're gonna explore both extension and flexion, both inhalation and exhalation, we wanna start from a relatively neutral position. So not super slumped, but not super overarched either. This neutral position will create the potential to move into both directions of flexion extension, external and internal rotation. Hopefully you get that. So to get there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring head, rib cage, and pelvis all stacked over each other. We're then gonna find that position where we get equal weight in the sit bones. We get equal weight on the front and the back part of the foot. We're doing this in standing. And then from there, we can commence with the rest of this activity. 
The second step here is gonna to be to work on the breathing. So if you really wanna dive deeper into the breathing, you should definitely get my breathwork breakthrough, which is gonna bring you through all of these cues, including the one that we're gonna do here. But I like to just start out with the basics here to get the feeling of the diaphragm being the primary muscle of breathing. So to do this, we get that stack, and we're gonna think about what that diaphragm does. As we take our breath in, the diaphragm actually moves down. It's gonna compress the guts, but it's gonna expand the lungs and make our rib cage bigger. As that happens, we're gonna move the ribs up and out into external rotation. So to feel this, the step-by-step -step is to gently pull your abs in very slightly, just like you're subtly sucking in your gut. And then from here, we're gonna think about breathing down to expand up, right? And that downward feeling is gonna slightly increase pressure here in the abdomen, as well as increase the volume of air in the rib cage, which is gonna give us that feeling of expansion, okay? So here we go. Gentle abdominal compression. Take our breath in. We're gonna breathe down if you're a guy into the balls, if you're a lady into the vag. Uh, okay. So we're gonna take our breath in. Good. Feel that expansion. Now we're gonna exhale and we're gonna allow just the opposite. So long exhale through either your open mouth or pursed lips. Gonna feel ribs coming down into internal rotation. Now, just a little pro tip here. If you are someone with reduced rib cage mobility, chances are that you've got a sternum that's in this depressed and downward position already. So after we do our inhale and we get it into a more elevated state, then on the exhale, we wanna allow the ribs to move down and around that as we maintain it in a relatively elevated state. A more complicated way to think about this is that we're inhaling, raising that sternum up, and then as we're exhaling, we're simply trying to delay the rate at which that sternum goes back towards depression in favor of the rib movement versus sternal movement. And if you wanna dive in on that level of detail, check out my group mentorship. All right, so now that we've got the position down and we've got the breathing down, we're already a lot of the way there, but we're really gonna take this to the next level when we begin to add in a movement component. And the easiest way to influence movement at the rib cage is by simply adding a reaching component to it. Now, in general, an overhead reach is gonna bring the ribs up and back like this, biasing the back of the rib cage into extension, bringing the ribs into external rotation and allowing that sternum to lift up. And then just the opposite is true for reaching down. As we reach down, we're gonna to tend to flex down like this, we're gonna bring the ribs into internal rotation, reducing space in the front and opening up space in the back. So we wanna have access to both. So like we said, we're gonna start from that neutral position, not being fully extended to start, not being fully flexed. We're gonna find that spot, head, rib cage, pelvis, all stacked. We know our breathing cues from before. And now we're gonna start off by getting the ribs to come up with a little bit of an upward and backward reach. So here I like to use palms up. That's gonna allow us to get the most open kind of a feel here. We're gonna take our breath in as we reach up and back. Remember, breathing down to expand up. I don't know if you can hear this, but I'm getting cracks and pops in my sternum and my rib cage as I'm doing this. Then we're gonna exhale, feeling those ribs move around the sternum. Inhale, reach up a little bit further. Exhale once again. And then one more time. Inhale, reach up and back. Now we can do just the opposite. And in this case, we're gonna turn the palms down. We're gonna reach downward. So I'm keeping that sternum up once again, but I'm gonna exhale and allow those ribs to move down. So starting here with an exhale. Feel the shoulder blades reach around the upper back kind of inclining forward, feel those ribs move together. Take our breath in from here, feeling the back of the rib cage expand. Exhale, reach a little bit further down and forward. And one more time, inhaling. And exhaling as we reach.
Now, just a little pro tip, and this is something I cover in basically all of my programs, is that when we take our breath in, if the abdominals slightly oppose that downward push of the diaphragm, it's gonna cause more air to be driven into the lungs and thus more rib cage expansion. So make sure you're not letting all the tension in your belly go, but there's some nuance here, which is outside the scope of this video. So if you wanna learn more, any one of my products will cover this in more depth. All right, so now that you've mastered those, now you have to regularly practice that in order to get the true benefit. Now, in terms of how much and how often, this is all stuff that I have for you inside of my Movement Foundations programs. So if you want a step-by-step done-for-you solution, go and pick those up. Now, I did say at the beginning of this video, this is gonna get you 80% of the way there. But in those 20% of cases, we might have to look at other movements, and that's exactly what I'm gonna cover in this next video over here. So if you wanna learn more, go ahead and check that out. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.